Hi everyone, today we are going to do acids, bases and salts and to begin with we are going to start with acids. I know acids are, it's a term that is that you are common with, you have seen this, you have heard this from 6th standard but still as we move to higher classes the definition also becomes better and bigger. Acids are actually basically compounds which will yield hydronium ions this hydronium ions we have seen in chemical bonding so when they are present in water they would yield hydronium ions for example when we take hydrochloric acid this hydrochloric acid plus water would give you hydronium ion plus chloride ion. So, that is how the definition goes for acids. Now, let us move on to the classification of acids. This classification can be based on so many things. See, when you go to school, when you come to school, you can classify yourself based on your classes, on your sections, on your height, on your houses. There are various kinds of classification. Similarly, when you come for acids, the first classification is based on origin. See, initially, very few acids were found and most of them were in nature. Now, we go into all organic, organic, organic and imagine these things. You can see an orange, you can see some lemon and basically we call uh, these as citrus fruits ok. Now these citrus fruits are organic in nature. So the acids that they contain, now if you take citrus fruits these contain citric acid, they contain ascorbic acid, grapes contain tartaric acid, apples contain malic acid ok. So they are all organic. So you can take them as organic acids the next origin is inorganic where do these come from they come from the minerals for example sodium chloride from sodium chloride you can get hydrochloric acid sodium nitrate can give you nitric acid so then they are also called as mineral acids examples HCl nitric acid sulfuric acid and so on. So, that is based on origin. The next classification is based on composition. Now, when you come to the mineral acids, you can divide them based on composition. Some acids contain only hydrogen and another non-metallic element. Okay, they are called as hydracids. Yet others would contain hydrogen and also oxygen. They are called as oxy acids. Now, examples of hydracids are hydrochloric acid, hydroiodic acid. See, this is a non metal and this is hydrogen. So, that gives you hydracids. But when you come to oxy acids, example sulfuric acid nitric acid. Now, these contain hydrogen, a non-metallic element and along with that it also contains oxygen. So, these are the two classification. The third one is based on strength. Whenever you call, you say, you just ask somebody, how are you? They would even, they would say either I am strong or they would say that I am feeling very weak. The same thing happens with acids. There are two kinds. So, one is a strong acid and some are weak acids. What do you mean and what is the difference between strong acid and a weak acid? A strong acid is something that will completely ionize in solution like when you add water it would completely form ions it will break down into ions so what is it breaking down 
into mostly ions that is a strong acid for example if we take hydrochloric acid which is a strong acid this would break down into hydrogen ion and chloride ion that is a strong acid now difference between this weak acid would be partial ionization or partial dissociation so when it is only partial what would happen is it would have molecules and ions so that is the difference between a strong acid and weak acid here this completely dissociates or ionizes into ions whereas this one is partial into molecules and ions example for this is acetic acid which would be present as acetate ion and hydrogen ion in water along with that you would also have some acetic acid molecules so this is called as strong acid and weak acid so when this happens complete ionization happens there is a high concentration of hydrogen ions in a strong acid whereas here there is a low concentration of hydrogen ions so these are the differences based on strength the next classification is based on concentration see when you take when mummy wants to prepare something special and she wants to boil the milk okay she is not getting condensed milk anyway so she boils the milk and she lets the milk keep boiling 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 half a liter becomes one just 250 ml from half a liter when it becomes 250 ml all the water has gone away and there's more amount or concentration of the milk products or milk particles that is called as concentration or concentrated so based on concentration you could divide it as concentrated acid and dilute acid okay sometimes when too many people come home suddenly your curry would be a lot of water being added to that and then it gets diluted so that's a dilute acid okay fine when it comes to chemical terms how do you say that so concentrated acid would contain high percentage of acid this dilute would contain less percentage of acid that's the first difference the second one is to be very appropriate concentrated would contain something more than 1 mole in 1 liter of water so more than 1 mole of acid in 1 liter of water okay that is concentrated here when you come it is less than 1 mole of acid per liter of water so that is the difference between concentrated and dilute acid the last one is based on basicity of acids so what do you mean by basicity of acid see for example when you take an acid like hydrochloric acid you can dissociate it into H plus and Cl minus. This hydrogen is replaceable. Okay, the word replaceable is important. So this hydrogen that's replaceable. If we take sulfuric acid, this gives you. There are two replaceable hydrogen ions. That's again replaceable. if we take phosphoric acid it would have three replaceable hydrogen ions so the word replaceable so the number of replaceable hydrogen ions in one molecule of an acid is called basicity of the acid now based on that this has only one 
this has 2 and this has 3. So, this is called as monobasic because it has only 1. This is called as dibasic and this is called as tribasic acid. So, the first difference being this has 1 replaceable hydrogen ion, 2 and this has 3. Okay, that is the first difference. The second difference being if this dissociates in one step, in a single step, this would dissociate in two steps. We will see that shortly and this will dissociate in three steps. Okay. So, when you come to this again, this dissociates into H plus and C L minus because all that it has is only one hydrogen ion. Now, when you come to sulfuric acid, this can dissociate into H plus and HSO4 minus. This is the first step. So, this H plus would combine with water rather. So, it actually gives you H3O plus that is the hydronium ion. Here also it would add on to give you in aqueous form to give H3O plus and bisulfate. This bisulfate again would dissociate into further another hydronium ion plus sulfate ion. Okay. So, all this when it is in the aqueous form that means what when water is added to it. Fine, let us go to the third one phosphoric acid. This also will dissociate let us take it as water here that is the aqueous form. So, it would give you one hydronium ion. So, one hydrogen gone then it becomes H 2 P O 4 minus. Okay. Now, again there are two replaceable ones. So, that comes here plus another molecule of water to give you another hydronium ion one, hi one more hydrogen gone then it becomes HPO4 2 minus. This again can dissociate in water to give you another hydronium ion plus PO4 3 minus. So, with that all the hydrogen ions are replaced. So, this is how it dissociates. The third difference in this is this can form only one normal salt when it is neutralized by a base. So, for example, if there is a base like sodium hydroxide which is a base, what is a neutralization reaction? It is a reaction between an acid and a base to give you salt and water. So, what happens actually this breaks down, this also breaks down to give you sodium chloride and water. This is a normal salt. Fine. Now, when you come to sulfuric acid, it can form two kinds of salts, one normal salt and one acid salt based on the availability of the base. Supposing very little base is available which means it is not sufficient, then it would form NaHSO4 plus water. Okay. When it has a hydrogen ion here, this is called as acid salt. Okay. If the base is sufficient, supposing you have two molecules of the base reacting with sulfuric acid, then it forms sodium sulfate plus water. And this does not have a hydrogen in it. This is called as normal salt. 
So, this can form only one normal salt, this can form one normal and one acid salt. Now, the third point here is forms two acid salt and one normal salt. So, let us see the equations. When this reacts with very little base, what happens here is literally replacement of one hydrogen. So, sodium comes here and there are till still two more hydrogen left plus one molecule of water. This has hydrogen, so it is called as acid salt. It has two hydrogen, so it is called dihydrogen sodium phosphate. Now, let us take that the same phosphoric acid plus supposing two molecules of sodium hydroxide is present. Then what it would do? It would remove two hydrogen and two sodium would come here. So, that gives you disodium hydrogen phosphate plus water. Again, there is hydrogen present. So, it is an acid salt. The last one, if it has three molecules of NaOH reacting with it. In that case, it forms sodium phosphate and water. Okay. So, in that case, this is called a normal salt. Okay. Now, let us see whether the hydrogen atoms are balanced. There are 3 and 3, there are 6 hydrogen atoms, which means we should have 3 molecules of water. Here we have 3 and 2 here. So, 1 is gone. So, we should have 2 molecules of water here. Here we have 3 plus 1, 4 here, 2 and 2, 4, it is balanced. So, these are the differences based on basicity of the acid.